Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. For a religious leader to question a person's faith is disgraceful. I'm proud to be a Christian, and as president, I will not allow Christianity to be consistently attacked and weakened, unlike what is happening now with our current president, okay? Believe me. No leader, especially a religious leader, should have the right to question another man's religion or faith. I see the moon rising. I see trouble on the way. I see the wakes of lightning. It's the savage nation. Look. The question is, and it's a tough one, is the Pope more of a Catholic than he is a communist? And the answer is probably he's more of a Leninist than either of the above. In Government Zero, I spent the whole chapter trying to prove to you that this strange man, the first non-European selected to be the Pope in 1,200 years, write that down. How'd they do that? Why did they do that? Who did that? New World Order, moron. The same people who are flooding Europe with Muslims to wipe out the white male Christian in Europe picked, handpicked a communist from South America to be the Vatican's chief. Now he has the nerve to come to our hemisphere, a religious man now, and, and meddle and stick his long nose into politics and tell us we're evil because we don't want to be overrun by Central Americans and Mexicans. We have no right for borders. And then you look at that phony hypocrite living in that palace of his in Rome, surrounded by a 150-foot wall. How many illegal immigrants did they let into the Vatican? And what about all the wealth inside the Vatican that they stole over the centuries? How can you listen to this? How can you listen to it when you have a phony in the White House who invites Black Lives Matter thugs, street radical thugs, bums, who burnt the city down into the White House? It's the world upside down. The world is upside down. What can I say to you? You want me to talk about it? I'll be glad to. I'll be glad to talk about the upside down world created by those who pull the strings. For this pope, this 78-year-old fool, I don't know, maybe he ate some food that had E. coli in it, and the E. coli crossed the blood-brain barrier, which is very unusual. Maybe the E. coli explains this, this pope attacking a candidate who simply says he wants to establish our borders again in the United States of America. How dare he? How dare he? Why didn't he go back to the Vatican there with the 150-foot stone walls? Topic two, Apple. Tim Cook, arrest him now. Tim Cook thinks he's more powerful than God. What you don't understand about Apple, Google, Yahoo!, Microsoft and all of those companies is that collectively they're more powerful than any government on earth. If you take the assets of these companies, any one of them, by the way, the assets are stronger than our country. We are in deep debt because of the psycho in the White House who prints money. They don't have to print money. They just make products that people want, and they don't pay taxes. They don't pay their fair share of taxes. All they do is talk about it. So you got the undershirt-wearing, pimple-faced boy from Harvard, worth $60 billion, he's telling you we should have open borders. His house is surrounded by bodyguards, Mr. Uh, uh, Faiselberg. So you take Faiselberg, you take Tim Cook, you take uh, Bill Gates and the others, they have more power than the U.S. government. So now they're on the side of the enemy. They're absolutely saying, you know what, hey, privacy trumps security. Now many of you are libertarians and you think that they're right. You're wrong. You're 100% wrong because of the following reason. First of all, the phone was owned by the uh, terrorist, the Muslim terrorist company, not by the Muslim. It was not his private phone, and the company has given permission to access that phone. That's number one. Number two, and you haven't figured this out, I told it to you yesterday, oh yeah, I'm on the side of privacy. If you let him develop a key to get into Mr. Mahmoud, uh, blah, blah, his phone, they'll get into your phone. Schmendrick, think carefully. 
Think carefully, Schmendrick. If Apple can get in and they're the only ones who can get into their phones, they've already gotten into your phone if they want to. So you'd rather have Apple have access to your phone than the FBI? Why? Why do you trust Tim Cook more than you trust Mr. Comey of the FBI? That's the only question there is. What? Tim Cook is going to defend you against Muslim murderers? What do they weaponize everyone at Google and at, uh, uh, excuse me, at Apple? Everyone at Apple who works there has now a submachine gun and training in counterterrorism? I didn't know that. Maybe they're the new government. That's topic two. Topic three, the pillow was against the headboard. Again, they're clarifying now. They're clarifying about a pillow. Texas ranch owner clarifies Scalia comments. We discover the judge in bed, a pillow over his head, has been misconstrued as evidence that he was smothered to death at Ceballo Creek Ranch. The conspiracy's flames, see, it's a conspiracy now. It's not common sense that every homicide inspector in the world is asking the same question. Now, anyone who asks the question is a kook and a nut. The conspiracy's flames were further fanned by Donald Trump, the Republican presidential campaign's frontrunner, who matter-of-factly told the radio host Michael Savage they found the pillow on his face, which is a pretty unusual place to find a pillow. What else now? But that's not true. Poindexter, the hotel owner, told multiple media outlets on Tuesday Scalia had a pillow over his head, not over his face, as some have been saying. The pillow was against the headboard. So in other words, he modified the story. Now they do the follow-up. The 79-year-old judge was in bed. Now, bad, here we go. Poor health, history of heart trouble, high blood pressure, said the phony New York Times. Local officials said he died of heart failure. What officials? What officials? What are you talking about? What officials? They didn't even inspect the body. They just said he died already. No autopsy was ordered, however, and he was declared dead over the phone. So Savage and their legions of disbelievers will have to take the government at its word. That so far seems unlikely. No, I trust this government. I got to tell you, I trust Barack Obama more than I trust God himself. Because Barack Obama is such a just man that he would invite thugs who try to burn down Baltimore and Ferguson and kill police into the White House. That's why I trust him, because he hates police. And I don't want to go down the road because you know what else I think about him. You just read my book, Government Zero, and you'll see the facts for yourself. Apple opposes order to help FBI unlock phone belonging to San Bernardino shooter. I say arrest uh, CEO Tim Cook immediately. Slap handcuffs on him and indict him. For what? Contempt of court. They would. You know that they could indict you for contempt of court if you violated a court order? Do you know that? If a federal judge presented an order that you did not want to comply with, they could put handcuffs on you. Tim Cook is so arrogant that he thinks he's above the law. And I want to say something else about these tech giants who are so cozy with President Obama. This goes for Google. It goes for Facebook. It certainly goes for Microsoft and the others. And I'll name them in a minute. They must be investigated by the new Justice Department for antitrust violations. In my opinion, all of them are practicing and uh, engaged in monopolistic practices. And by any fair measure, they should be broken up. They should be broken up because they're blocking competition. Can you name a competitor to Facebook? Is there one? I don't know of it. What does it have, 1% of the market share? That's called a monopoly. Can you name a competitor to Google? Name another search engine that's as big as Google. Or even within the realm of Google, there is none. That's a monopoly. Name a company that provides the same services and products that Microsoft provides that is anywhere near it in size. Maybe there's another few companies that account for 1% or 2% of the market. That's called a monopoly. Any other government would break them up. They want to now play with our safety. I say bust them up. Next president, whoever it is, left or right, I don't care if it's a left-wing fanatic, they should bust up these tech giants. They're way out of control and they're too powerful for our safety. Those are enough topics to choke a horse with. Now let's go for the rest of them on michaelsavage.com. If that's not enough for you, it's a frightening one I just gave out here because I tell you the truth, it's a lot to talk about. And I know the people are interested in these things, but I don't know how much they can absorb. That's why just before the show, instead of reading the news, I was reading Hemings Motor News. I was trying to get my mind off the world's problems. One of my hobbies is cars, uh, old cars, antique cars. So I look at prices of cars, that I, some of which I own what it's worth, what it's not worth, and why people collect them. Why is this such a big hobby in America? Why does every man over the age of 50 who has a little extra money have a, a hobby car? Ask yourself that question. 
Because I know the answer because I've had one for years or several of them for years. Because when you go under that hood, even if you're tinkering with a few things you know how to do, whether it's adjusting a hose or putting in a pipe or this and that, it's something you can do to get your mind off the evils of the world and the liars called politicians. I mean, what do you want me to do, drink the Ted Cruz elixir? Step right up, Dick. Step right up to the wagon train. Here comes Ted Cruz with the Cruz elixir. Drink this elixir and it'll give you eternal health. The borders will be secure. No, no, no. Here comes the Rubio wagon. Drink the Rubio elixir. Step right up. Drink the Rubio elixir. It's better for your health than the Cruz elixir. I promise you eternal life. I promise you your arthritis will go away. Your rheumatism will go away. Your heart disease will go away. Your hair will grow. Your teeth will come back. It is good for pyorrhea. It is good for arthritis. Drink the Rubio elixir. No, no, drink the Cruz elixir. That's what is going on right now. Now, if you're really crazy, you can drink the Hillary elixir. She's going to save you, you here. A corrupt old woman like that whose eyes are falling out of her head. She's tripping on the stage. Go elect someone like her to the White House. You don't know who she is. A miracle. All of a sudden, a brand new, a brand new Hillary emerged. She was reborn. A born-again Clinton. We had her for eight years. She was running the country. Eight years she ran the country. What do you expect to happen? Something different? Or maybe you'd like the communist from New York who never ran a lemonade stand. A man who hates anyone with money. A man who hates anyone who has a crease in his suit. This is a man who hates anybody who has a press in his pants. Anyone whose teeth are straight, he hates. Anyone who can comb his hair without little chiggers falling out of his hair, he hates. He's an evil, horrible man, and he's surging in the polls. Do you know why? Well, you'll find out why very soon, because he's going to beat Hillary, and then what? You think the Democrat establishment's not going to give him a, a little uh, visit to the ranch? He may get a visit to the Texas ranch for free, and a grifter like him will never say no. A free, don't worry, hey, Bernie. Bernie, we got a free uh, charter, free jet. Really? Not gonna, really? Can I bring my wife? Yeah, bring your children. Well, you, I don't know where they are. Well, we'll try to find them. You can bring your wife and children for free on the jet. Get free room, free board, free soda, free drinks, anything you want, Bernie. Where is it? Well, it's in the middle of nowhere, out of Texas, near the burning bush. Uh, does it come with pillows? Oh, yeah, we got extra pillows. Large, fluffy pillows that tend to fall over your face while you're sleeping and then are rearranged in the morning. We have wonderful health care. 300 miles away, burning. Hope you don't have any health conditions. If you'd like to go hunting, no, no, I hate guns. Well, don't worry about that. You don't have to go hunting because you'll be the hunted. Back in a minute. They're using the Pope as a pawn, and they should be ashamed of themselves. That's the Mexican government. They should be ashamed of themselves for doing so especially when so many lives are involved and when illegal immigration is so rampant and so dangerous and so bad for the United States, okay? Period. That's it. That's why he's going to be president. And I suggest he doesn't accept any free trips. I don't think he needs them. The Pope is, a, is such a bad man to do a thing like this. Daring, it's bad enough that he comes here and tells us we're all evil because we want borders, language, and culture, telling us we're no good because we don't want to give any more to the Mexicans, Central Americans, than we've already given them. And then to top it off, he has the nerve to say that Trump is not even a Christian. That's the lowest thing I've ever heard come out of the mouth of a religious person in my life. He's a very bad man. And it gets even worse. Listen to what Trump says in 17, because he makes sense again. Listen. Listen if and when the Vatican is attacked by ISIS, you know, ISIS, their primary goal is to get to the Vatican. That would be their ultimate trophy. They want to do what they did to all of these magnificent artifacts and all of the beautiful museums that they've totally destroyed all over the Middle East, right? If and when the Vatican is attacked by ISIS, which as everyone knows is ISIS's ultimate trophy, I can promise you that the Pope would have only wished and prayed that Donald Trump would have been president. You, you mean will be president? Well, actually, if you are president, ISIS will be gone. But the thing is, is that, you know, people criticize Trump for being um, superficial, a frat boy, bully, doesn't know what he's talking about. They say he never says anything. Well, he just said something. 